Hello, and welcome to the LifeWorks podcast. Joining me today is Olivia Sheldon Barnett, the CEO and founder of Positive Energy Yoga. Olivia began her passion for fitness and health at an early age. At 15, she became a black belt in karate and continued on her fitness path, teaching kickboxing, women's self-defense, and later starting her company, Positive Energy Yoga. She's been teaching for over 20 years. Speaking from personal experience, Olivia can tie you up like a pretzel, have you laughing on the floor, and leave you feeling completely at peace afterwards. Olivia's mantra is humility, integrity, perseverance, heal thyself, do you, and shine on. And she really does embody that. Olivia, it's great to have you on the podcast today. Thanks so much for having me. That was a nice intro. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, you you really do you really do you know live live your uh, live your talk. So, um, so so you have a, you do have a fascinating backstory. Tell us a little bit about yourself from from your own perspective. So I grew up in Virginia Beach, very active from age two. I've always been into fitness and exercise in some fashion or form. I did gymnastics and. Um, some dance. And then when I found karate at age nine, I just fell in love. Like it was my jam. And after I got my black belt, I started teaching kids karate. So I started teaching really at age 15. And then I taught women's self-defense class mm -hmm. and I just was drawn to it. It just felt, I felt at home. It felt like what I was meant to do. Yeah. And when I went to college, uh, I went to James Madison university and got an English degree. Cause that'll get you far. <laughs> um, I taught aerobics while I was at school right. and then I graduated and I'm like, well, what do I do with an English degree now? Um, I just started teaching aerobics around town in Virginia Beach, and I taught at a cardiac rehabilitation center with um, some older folks, and that was amazing because they didn't know what to do with 21-year-old, peppy, energetic me. I didn't right. care that they were 75. And you know what? They rose up to the challenge and became fitness buffs. Um, so wow. anybody at any age, under any circumstances, can absolutely work out. And uh, I did some news. I used to go teach hmm. the... Uh, I'd go on the news and have the weather guy like doing bicep curls with soup cans and, you know, workouts at home. And I taught some, uh, I taught some QVC. I did QVC for a little bit, uh, selling fitness equipment. Um, so I've done, I've dabbled, I've dabbled in the fitness world along the way. And how I sort of ended up being the yoga gal is I used to teach kickboxing and step aerobics and mm -hmm. all of all the workouts at the gym. I was sort of the gym gal and I started getting injured. And honestly, oh, wow. yoga kind of found me because after uh, not being able to teach, you know, step aerobics because of knee injury and then kickboxing because of shoulder injury. Oh, wow. I just ended up doing yoga full time and realized it was sort of kinder, kind, kinder and gentler on the body and more sustainable. So mm. yeah, that's how I'm here. Now I'm, now I'm the yoga girl. <laughs> that, that's amazing. And, and I, I, you know, it's funny because you're, you're kind of like the Washington DC's personal yoga trainer to the, to the stars, right? You know, like you've even worked out that. with senators and things like that, like, you know, really significant people who like, don't want to admit that they're into yoga, like come to you. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I train a lot of CEOs that maybe they're not comfortable going to a class. Um, right. I have trained a senator. Yeah. I have some, I have some interesting clientele for sure. But yeah, that just yeah. goes to show you that everybody sort of realizes maybe we need a little yoga in our lives, <laughs> especially in this town. What's your observation about how people are feeling these days? Well, for sure. Uh, the collective, um, feeling and vibration is one of anxiety and it's a roller coaster of emotion you know mm -hmm. i think we want to feel hopeful and optimistic about the future but it just feels very overwhelming so i think people more than any time in my lifetime collectively like we all go through things um you know we lose a job or we have a parent right. who's ill or we have things that are going to be tra traumatic and stressful in our life but just collectively as a society and we're all dealing with it in our own way but i think we're all just super stressed out our nervous system is shot um yeah, I just think we're feeling anxious and overwhelmed more than ever before. And it's sad, but that is the case that we're in. Yeah. How do you, how do you manage to radiate such positivity, uh, even despite, you know, despite the environment that we're in? 
So, um, well, hopefully it's sort of natural <laughs> and, and intuitive, but I, I do believe in faking it until you make it. In some mm. cases, if maybe you don't wake up and feel super optimistic that day, no. that find something to feel grateful for and find a goal for the day. I call it my GG, my, my gratitude and my goal. And sometimes mm. gratitude, honestly, I wake up every day and I just say, I am so grateful for all my body parts that still work. And I'm hopeful for the ones that need some working yeah. on and then have a goal for the day. And maybe that goal is like organizing. Maybe the goal is getting through the day and mm. maybe the goal is eating healthier for two of your three meals. So I think positivity is very much a state of mind. Um, I mm. think how we train our body, we can train, you know, we train our muscles, we get stronger. We start with two pound weights and then we do five pound weights and we, we get stronger and we train our body. Our muscles, they learn and they know what is repeated over and over again. And yeah. I think you can train, you can train your brain the same way. So if you wake up and you've got the negative attitude, well, you're probably going to have a tough day. You're going to be fighting a pill battle. But if you wake up and you say, I'm going to make it a great day, not I'm going to have... I'm going to make it a great day, not just have a great day. I'm going to make it happen mm -hmm. and just small steps, whatever you can find along the way. Yeah. I actually have, I have a little, I'm a, I'm a talker. I've got a, a story of positivity and sort of my inspiration. If I can share with you. And I think Please. this is good for anybody. Please. Do you mind? I don't mind at all. Uh, Please. So my, my mom was, my mom is like her nickname and she used to work in a school and they called her Miss Sunshine. She's always happy. I mean, blissfully happy. Like it's kind mm. of annoying. And she unfortunately was in a car accident about four years ago mm. and they took two jaws of life to get her out of the car and mm. both of her legs were shattered. They almost cut off one of her legs. Um, she has had nine surgeries since that, um, since that accident. And she never blinked a moment of, I feel sorry for myself. This is awful. I'm sad. I'm depressed. And I, I kind of said, I was like, mom, it's okay to feel bad. She goes, I'm so grateful to be alive. And, and the doctors who told her that she would, ne the doctor said, you're going to have to have a walker for the rest of your life. And my mom had always been someone who walks the boardwalk like every day five to six miles a day. She loves to yeah, move. Yeah. She's an exerciser. She's a doer, a liver. And she said, it never crossed my mind that I wouldn't walk. It never crossed my mind that I wouldn't be mm. okay. It didn't even come into her brain. She didn't even let it permeate her brain waves. Like you're not going to be able to do that. And wow. that to me just is, that is what positivity is, is I am not going to let this take me down. And I refuse to just sit here and feel sorry for myself. I'm going to get up and I'm going to make it happen. And she doesn't need a walker. She does everything around her house now by herself. And she still walks her five to six miles on the boardwalk every day. She's like literally a miracle. Wow. That's, that's, so, that's incredible. That's like an incredible that, story. That's the essence of positivity is I believe I will be okay. I'm going to make it okay. And she did. Yeah. How much of that do you think rubbed off on you? Well, I think when you, you grow up, you've got the genetic component, right? We all right. have the genetic component. Some people's hamstrings are flexible. Some people's aren't, <laughs> right? And then, and then the environmental plays a big right. part. So yeah, I mean, I think if you grow up in a negative household, um, I think it's hard to come out of that and have to readjust. But it's the, we have so much in our brain, and I know you've done other podcasts about it, but we have so much in our brain wiring that we can rewire and train just the same way we train our biceps and our hamstrings, right? Right, right, right. How important is the, the dailiness of, of our decisions to remain positive or to get centered? How, how important is that? I think it's vital. I think our body and our minds know what we do regularly, like having a routine. Like if I floss my teeth every day, I'm going to have a better dental visit. If I take yeah. care of myself and I think positive every day, it's just reinforcing good behaviors. We are, we are creatures of habit. I think instinctively we are just creatures of habit. We like, we like to go to the same places. We like to eat the same food. We like to do the same thing. Like I think we like habit, right? That makes us feel yeah. comfortable. So you just have to have good habits, right? And maybe that's starting with one or two and certainly how we think and staying in that state of positivity is, a wake up with your gratitude and your goal in the morning.
it's like putting money, it's like putting money in the bank, right? If you take care of yourself every day, right? At the end of the year, you're going to be a healthier, happier, better person. If you neglect yourself, you know, you're going to deplete from that account. So, so people, people like to talk about money and bank accounts. Well, best like invest in yourself every day, invest in yourself. Hmm. Tell us, tell us a little bit about beyond your, beyond your morning routine. Tell us a little bit about your typical, uh, your typical day. So my typical day, well, morning routine, I have a six-year-old son, so <laughs> my morning is like, ah! um, I, I drink, uh, I have my, I have my mama drink every day. My mama juice is not wine. <laughs> I actually no. don't drink any alcohol at all. Um, I don't like the taste of it, but I drink my mama juice in the morning. My mama juice is aloe juice because that's good for your digestive system. I do my, um, uh, my apple cider vinegar, also good for digestive system. I have some digestive issues. So just to set the tone with like warm water. So that's yeah. sort of my morning, like start with warm water, lemon juice, have your, have a nice little morning routine mm -hmm. and then, uh, exercise. So the only way I feel like I can get through my, the rest of my day is that I've done something for myself. And for me, it's always exercise. So that can be a walk around the block, um, listening to some no. music that it can be, uh, I, I actually don't do a lot of yoga on my own only because I teach so much yoga that I'm right. sort of doing it. Um, my workouts are usually like I'm lifting weights and I'm using the BOSU ball and um, I like, you know, elliptical when the gyms are open. So that's sort of my meditation in motion, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much my day. And then, you know, taking care of my son and teaching yoga to awesome people like you. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good day. I can't complain. You got to find what you love and then figure out how to make a living doing it. Right. 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 How do you how do you define success? Success. Um, my definition of success is certainly probably different than somebody else's definition, but mm. I think you have to have health as your foundation. Mm. And I know that just because I've trained so many wealthy people. I remember I trained this billionaire, right? And his back was out. Like he couldn't move. So he couldn't enjoy his life. He couldn't go to work. He couldn't go to his children's soccer games. Wow. He was just in pain. So it was kind of like, wow, it doesn't matter how much money you have. Yes. Money helps you get, you know, better get help and you have access to much more than those who do not. I get it. But if you don't have your health just as a foundation, you're going to have other issues. I just think you're going to be missing out a lot. So to me, success is having your health first. Mm -hmm. um, it's also finding your passion, like what ignites you, what sparks joy, what makes you want to keep going throughout the day. Yeah. Part of that is finding your purpose. What are we, why are we here? What are we meant to do on this planet? What do you think are some of the misconceptions that people have around health and fitness and, um, and even find, you know, centeredness. Uh, I think we get caught up in the all or nothing. It's mm. where we feel overwhelmed. Like you've got to get out there. You have to eat really healthy. You have to stop eating carbohydrates. You have to make sure you drink eight glasses of water a day. You have to, right. you have to do this and that. It, it almost feels like, Whoa, that feels so overwhelming. I kind of don't want to like shut down and not do anything. Right. So I think the misconception is like, I have to do this, you know, one hour of yoga for it to benefit me. And my answer is like, mm -hmm. no, you can do 10 minutes here or there. You can stretch when you're sitting at your desk. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you know, make healthier choices with your food. You don't have to cut out all sugar and all carbohydrates. This living in a state of extremes is mm -hmm. what's going to scare us away from uh, finding that center, right? So to me, I would say baby steps and um, finding something that you can sort of control during the day. Like what, right. what can you control during the day? Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it, it, it does. It, it, yeah, it does. And, you know, I think you, you said something one time, like, um, in a, in a class one time that, you know, like some people say like, I want to work on this, like one corner of my gut right here, you know, like I just want to yeah. do that, you know, but it sounds like what you're saying is that no, it's, you know, you have to sort of embrace health and wellness as sort of a holistic thing. 
and that little corner will get taken care of, right? You know, as yeah. you as you embrace it all, you know, as you embrace it and you, you do a little bit every day. So it's, you know, it's, it's really, it, it's a great philosophy that you have. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think it's definitely the combination too of like your mental health. So what feeds mm -hmm. you for your mental health? Is that, you know, reading a book? Is that listening to music? Is that dancing in your living room? Is that taking five minutes for meditation? So that looks different for each person, your mental, emotional mm -hmm. health. Um, is that spending time with your family? Maybe that actually feels stressful. So you need like time to yourself, right? <laughs> I'm not speaking right. from experience. I'm not, I'm not. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not. Um, yeah. So I think it's, yes, approaching that, having that comprehensive, like spiritual, mental, physical, mm. you need all those components. If one is more than the other, then we're out of balance, right? Yeah, yeah. What kind of advice do you think, can you give us around eating? And how important is eating, uh, you know, to this whole thing? So eating is a big like trigger for a lot of people, like the yeah. diet thing. Eating is very connected to our emotions, right? Like we eat when we're happy, we eat when we're mm -hmm. sad. And so my yoga teacher, uh, he always said we should eat when we're hungry and we should eat because we need the food to sustain life. In other words, mm -hmm. he wasn't a big believer and like gluttonous eating and overdoing it. Um, he's very much a minimalist. Uh, so now I, I like my little snacks and my sugar, but I would say like everything in moderation, try to cut out the chemicals and the preservatives and the additives and really eat from the earth. So mm -hmm. anything that we can get from the earth. So when people say like, cut out all carbs, cut out all sugar, stop drinking. You know, if you enjoy a glass of wine, have a glass of wine, like live your life, right? Right, right. Um, if you need a piece of chocolate cake, I'm raising my hand, ice cream. Like I, I do like the sugar. I will say right. like sugar is probably one of the worst things for our bodies that we could consume. And I'm saying that mm -hmm. as a sugar lover, but it is inflammatory. It is right. inflammatory. So if you like have arthritis and conditions, I mean, I, so at one point I cut sugar out for eight months. Wow. My, my eyes got clearer. My skin got clearer. I didn't have my bags under my eyes got better. Like it was oh. amazing. Now, unfortunately I got off that wagon, uh, and, and back to the, back to a little right. bit of sugar, but you know, I try to eat, eat, eat healthy as you can eat as healthy mm -hmm. as you can try to eat organic and just try to eat on, from the earth eat in moderation. Um, I know diets don't work. I think the statistic and don't quote me, but 97% probably of people who do diets, they don't, they gain the weight back. So going on a diet eh, making a lifestyle change that feels healthy and sustainable, not like, Oh, I'm going to starve myself for two months. And then I'm going to be like exactly how I want to be. Yeah. But right. that's just not sustainable. And you're probably going to be super cranky. <laughs> <laughs> so, so be happy and be yourself. Yeah, I was not a nice, the first couple months of no sugar, Olivia was not a nice, happy person. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. So it's, that's, that's, it sounds, it's just common sense, right? I mean, it everything is. that you're I saying know, sounds it's like common not, sense. Yes, people make it so complicated and you know, they, they get so worked up about it. And I mean, the amount yeah. of money we all spend on these like plans and these cleanses. I mean, I watch all my clients. I mean, I've, I've been in yeah. this industry. I've been yeah. in this industry really since I was 15. I've been a gym rat. I've seen everything from, you know, the eating disorders, like all these people who you see who are like these mm. sh ripped up shredded fitness buffs. I mean, they all, they starve themselves. They literally starve themselves before mm. competition. And then wow. they just go back. But if you see what they look like off season, you're like, that doesn't even look like the same person. So that's living in state of extremes. Wow. And that's just not going to work. That's, it's just not going to work. It's your life works. Well, that's not going to work. Right. <laughs> right. We're all about trying to make life work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ser seriously. That doesn't, it just doesn't work. So just making good choices and um, yeah, just making healthy choices every day. Yeah. Drinking water, drinking water. If it's hard to, you know, if it's hard to, to do it all, maybe pick one thing, maybe ditch soda, right? Maybe right. cut out sugar, maybe just have one sweet treat a day. So right. just making smart choices. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard uh, from some others that working with you has been 
kind of like tapping into the fountain of youth. Um, <laughs> yeah, and no, and it was a genuine compliment that they paid you. And and so I'm I'm curious to know um, what do you, what's your take on the fountain of youth? What you know? How do we tap into that? Ah, the elusive fountain of youth. It's the million dollar question. Yeah. Um, I think the fountain of youth is taking care of yourself. I think mm -hmm. it's, we spend so much time taking care and not to put the dudes down, but women, especially like we're just constant like caretakers and we feel guilty of everything. We're nurturing everybody, everyone around us that we almost feel guilty when we take time for ourselves. So for me, that fountain of youth is finding something that mm -hmm. brings you joy and happiness, fixes us at sort of a cellular level. It helps our brain waves. It, I mean, you can look up the research. It's pretty cool. It's much more mainstream. So for me, I'm going to say yoga and finding something that brings you personal joy and taking care of yourself and not feeling guilty about it, yeah. not having to explain it to anybody just, and not feeling selfish. Like, I think we feel selfish if we're like, uh, I just want to take an hour to exercise. I know so many mom friends that they feel guilty taking any time for themselves. And it's really hard to let go of that. It's so necessary. It's the old, uh, put the oxygen mask on, right? Like somebody else or yourself first Absolutely. so that you can take care of everybody else. Absolutely. Like that's so true. We have, to, so fountain of youth is take care of yourself and then you can take care of the, everybody else you want to take care of. And certainly yoga and exercise and eating right are part of that. Mm -hmm. Why could they not be? Yeah. Yeah. Wis wisdom, according to the, you know, the, air, the, the flight safety card, right? <laughs> right, right. There. I learned it on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Everything I needed to know about self-care. I, I, I paid attention the when they were talking. Card. <laughs> <laughs> So, so laughter, is, laughter is the fountain yeah. of youth. Yeah, yeah. Having a good I sense of agree. humor. There you go. I do agree with that. <laughs> and you bring it out. You're, you're one who brings it out. One of the things that's always impressed me about you. And I said it at the beginning, uh, like I'll, I'll be in class and man, I'm like struggling, sweating, you know, just a mess and twisted up like a pretzel. And you'll say something like hilarious and it's just offhand. And I'm just, I'm there twisted up and dying. I'm on the floor, literally rolling on the floor laughing. It's, uh, so you, you really do bring out laughter. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's my goal. I think what's, yeah. you know, life is already too serious and structured and tough and pressure and stress. I don't want like your exercise or your yoga practice to be that way. So I do have a very lighthearted approach. It's not for everybody. But some yeah. people enjoy giggling and laughing and being goofy. And I've got a bunch of immature things to say. So I'm just going to share. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's awesome. Thanks. Um, do you think it's possible? So for, because you, you, you mentioned that you work with people who are older and, and that you've turned yeah. them into fitness buffs and things like that. Yeah. Do you think it's possible for someone who's mid, you know, middle-aged to to develop their you know young adult body you know so say you know you're 40 through you know 40 through say 60 or something like that yeah. um and but you're trying you're really you really have embraced you know fitness is it possible for that person to get back to a 20 something year old health or body or uh, what's your what's your what's your thought so we can't control sort of the skin <laughs> right the, the wrinkles come and I'll just say I'm 45, I'm owning it. And my answer to that is I have seen 25 year olds who look very out of shape to me and mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to look like that 25 year old. So I think age is totally relative. Um, I have an 87 year old client. He started with me when he was 67 years old. Wow. And I just said, we are going to keep you going and strong as long as we can. I have him doing balance. I have him doing uh, age appropriate things. So we have sure. slowed down. We do more things seated, but I always think that we should live up to our potential and our ability at, at any age. So 40, 45, yeah, okay, my knees don't work like they did when they were 25, but I work out smarter 
and I maybe don't have to work out as long. I used to be like big over exerciser. Like I would work mm -hmm. out for two hours a day. I would do like Stairmaster and then I would go teach a kickboxing class and then I'd have like a step class later. That was too much. That's wear and tear on the body and that ends up causing injury. So I'm um, very important. The 20 year olds who are working out, stop overdoing it. It's just that long term, uh, long term that ego. Yeah equals injury. Okay. Ego yeah. equals injury. I've seen it. I've lived it. It's just not worth oh. it. So less really can be more. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. You can train your body at 40 to 60. That's in your prime, baby. You've got experience under your belt to make yeah. those better choices. And yeah, I, I know tons of 40 to 60 year olds, if we're going to stay in that age range, who are in much better shape then maybe the young folks honestly have more, they have a little more energy, but if you mm -hmm. eat really healthy and you take care of yourself, my yoga teachers, uh, late sixties, he climbs mountains, he does wheatgrass juice shots. I can't do those anymore. Um, but I, but every, my, my point is that yes, you can be strong and healthy and vibrant at any age, whatever you got to make the best of it and keep improving, find your potential at whatever age you are. How does a person develop confidence? Ooh, how does a person develop confidence? Mm. That's back to the train your brain, talk yourself mm. into a good space. Because yeah. I think we're really good at saying negative things. Um, so I was a Lululemon ambassador and we went to this retreat. So it was like the top fitness professionals in the area. We all met, it was really cool. And we all had to write down something that we thought about ourselves and it was almost like tear tearful that i would say 70 percent of the people wrote i feel like i'm not good enough wow. these are people who are in the best shape possible top of their game um head of the industry yeah. and they were writing down i don't feel good enough and i was like wow that's a lot of people who are really smart and who I look up to who are feeling and thinking it's almost like we're always all feeling like we're not good enough. And mm. that just was really sad to me. Cause I think, yes, we are. Yes, you're good enough. You know, it's almost like when I, when I teach yoga and I'm like, pat yourself on the back, you know, when we're doing our yeah. tricep stretch, I say, pat right. yourself on the back. Yes. Like pat yourself on the back, like get up in the morning. Um, what is that SNL character that says like Stuart Smalley? He goes, I'm Stuart good enough. Smalley. I'm smart enough. I'm strong enough. People love people like me. Right. So oh, get up it. and train yeah. the brain and say, right. Who doesn't love a little SNL shout out. Um, just retrain your brain wiring until you mm. talk yourself into a good space. And you say, so building confidence, maybe we're not maybe our childhood, uh, you know, somebody bullied you and you had like a bad experience or yeah. you're struggling right now. There's all, you're always going to be good at something. And everybody is in this, in this human connection of struggle. We're always all struggling with something. The happiest person that you think is so, so happy, like they're struggling with something. Everybody, everybody has a past. Everybody has experiences everybody struggles. So we're in, mm. we're kind of like, we're in this together and either we're going to help each other or yeah. we're going to hurt one another. And I choose, let's choose helping and let that be starting with yourself, right? Like help yourself, say something nice to yourself. Yeah. Like I like my wrinkles when I go upside down, they look better, right? Like <laughs> turn it around, turn it around, spin it. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for those of us, and I'll, and I'll throw my hand up, you know, on, on this one, for those of us who struggle with anxiety, you know, yeah. just how, how do we go, how can we go from a, from a, a, a mental space of, of essentially fear to a place where we are centered? How, how can we make that, make that, that, that journey or that quick journey, you know, from, hopefully it's a quick journey from from, from yeah. really stressed, really anxious to, to centered and at peace. How can we do that? That is a really good question. Um, I think that that's going to be a little different for each person. Mm -hmm. um, in, the immediate, in the immediate sense, honestly, just closing your eyes and taking deep breaths, you can turn off that stress hormone cortisol. So it is mm -hmm. like a physical 
manifestation, right? Like stress manifests itself in our body. Like I see it all the time. I see people, it's like, Hey, can you relax your shoulders? And they're like, Oh, I didn't even realize I was doing that. (laughs) That I see stress manifests itself in people's bodies. So in the immediate sense, it would be close your eyes um, and just Mm -hmm. take some slow, deep. It could be, even if you don't know how to do yoga breathing, right? So Mm -hmm. yoga breathing is all nostril breathing. It's called Ujjayi. You can look it up. It's inhale Mm -hmm. through the nose, exhale through the nose. It's more complicated than that. Um, Trying to get sort of to your, your lower lungs. But the cool thing about these breathing or what we call pranayama exercises is that it literally it turns off that stress hormone. You cannot feel stress. You will not be stressed or anxious if you can just close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Um, I too, I'm like, as you can tell, like I'm high strung, I'm anxious. I'm not your typical yoga teacher. I'm like yoga for type A's, woo, call me, call me. Um, You know, I am super high energy. So, um, and with that usually comes a bit of anxiety and stress and, um, and that is hard to control. So I control it personally, my answer to everything. I exercise, Mm -hmm. I feel stressed. I get on the elliptical. I listen to music. I tune out. It's my moving meditation. I'm not really Mm -hmm. good at sitting still. So I would say in the immediate sense, do the breath also, um, holding onto your belly. So hand in case you hand on the belly. And then sometimes I have you guys do this in Savasana, right hand on your belly and left hand on your heart. So our stomach is our emotional center. Doesn't that make Mm. sense? Like you get butterflies in your stomach when you're excited. You get like knots in your stomach when you're stressed. Um, Mm -hmm. I have digestive issues I mentioned. And a lot of that is like me holding in that stress. So I have to release it in some way. After 21 years, I would have mastered it, but I'm not going to give up trying, right? But right hand to belly is literally like, I am calming down. I am soothing. I am bringing good healing energy into mm-hmm. my, into my cent- literally the center of our being, right? This is our center of our being. So right hand to belly. Sometimes people will bring their left hand to their head, right? So just sort of mm-hmm. calming the mind and calming that emotion, emotional center or left hand to your heart. That's your heart center, your compassion zone. So I would say in the immediate sense, just to close your eyes and take five deep breaths with hand on belly and hand heart, and then another five deep breaths with left hand to your head. And then just doing that, um, it slows down the breathing, it calms the heart rate, it calms the nervous system down. So there are a lot of really cool physical ways to calm down just the same way that stress stress manifests itself in our body and then we're tight and we're, we're this and we feel overwhelmed. Yeah. But we, we can reverse that because we can use our body and our movement to help calm the stress. So it works both mm-hmm. ways, just like it works negatively. It works in the other direction. Oh, sure. I, I, I never really thought of it that way. No, that's, that's really, that's really helpful. Good. Good. Yay. I, wanna... <laughs> I think it just helped me. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. <laughs> you feel calmer now or in a, during our I interview? I do actually. <laughs> okay, good. Good. I want to, I want to ask a couple of, uh, uh, some some more general questions. Yeah. What do you want most for your life? Well, uh, now that I'm a mom, I want to be a good mom. I think anybody who's mm. you know a parent when you get there, it's like I just want to just want to send a good human being into the universe. Yeah. Um, what do I want most for my life? I would say fulfilling my purpose helping people help themselves. Like Mm -hmm. I like to teach the art of self-reliance. I want you to be able to fix yourself and heal yourself that we don't have to spend tons of money and all day going to chiropractors and physical therapists. I mean, I see people all the time who are always searching so desperately for answers. And it's like, actually you have a lot of the answers right there. They're right there. I got an email from this lady the other day and she was, um, had sent me a bunch of other emails, emails about her hip hurting. And I was like, I think you need to do this and that and roll the ball and try this. And she wrote me an email and she was like, life changing. My hip doesn't hurt. It's wow. literally a miracle. It's magical. So for me, um, like making money doesn't do it for me. I don't make that much money, but if I did, I, it, I still don't think it would do it for me. Like, but I'd like to try, I'd like to try, yeah. I try. Um, but I think, I think being able to just help other people fix and help and heal themselves, yeah. like that's it for me. 
that's it. That's all I need is to know that I helped, you know, that her hip feels better and she's out of pain. And Mm -hmm. if I can share some of my own experiences, I've got a lot, I've got a million aches and pains of my own from, you know, overuse, uh, underuse in certain cases. Um, So I can, you know, I can just share my experience and hopefully that helps other people. Yeah. What one piece of advice would you give to the world? Don't make me choose one. I was an English major. We're not good at just <laughs> short, concise answers. It's not what we do. Okay. Three. Okay. Three. Okay, gonna, all right, good. I'm going to give you three. Give, yeah. give, don't take. Okay. Give, give back. Give back to Mother Earth. Give back to other humans. Uh, give back to yourself. Mm. Don't keep taking, taking, taking from everything and everything. Greed. Ugh. Um, follow your intuition. Mm-hmm. That is what I teach my, what my girls, my women's self-defense classes, follow your intuition. If something feels wrong, don't do it. If something is not working out, you know how you like, you have a plan and you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to force this plan to happen. And then yeah. you, you do it. And then it rains like the whole vacation. And you're like, man, my intuition told me not to do this because everything wasn't really working out and lining up. Right. And, Like I just should have followed that gut. So I think that's the same way with meeting people, right? Like you meet Mm. people and you're like red flag, something's a little off, Um, you know, and then that shows itself to be the case. So follow your intuition for, Mm. for everything, even for eating, like even for just how we think, how we eat. And then that leads me to make good choices is, uh, or choose wisely. My dad used to say, choose wisely. I think he was talking (laughs) about like boys, right? Like choose wisely. But yeah. I think that's for everything. Like just choose wisely who you keep close to you. Choose wisely um, making a good exercise plan. Choose wisely mm-hmm. your thoughts, not to think negatively all the time or most of the time just to, um, so yeah, those are my three. Those are my three. Give, don't take, follow mm-hmm. your intuition and choose wisely. That's, that's good. It's, it's fantastic. Okay, good. <laughs> Really good. Sorry, I can do one. Sorry, I can do one. <laughs> no, it's good. Is there anything that I haven't asked you uh, that you think would be helpful for us to know? Oh, did you hit all? You you had like eight hundred questions. <laughs> I, do, I do have an embarrassing number of questions. <laughs> no, no, I think it's you know what? It's always good to be thorough. Um, yeah. You know, I I don't think that you've asked me about anything that uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Just that. Um, my biggest hope for people is just that they feel empowered to take care of themselves, to own their own health, to not wait until, not wait until there's a real problem to yeah. get. Sometimes people are waiting. It's like, oh, well, finally I, you know, had a, um, this guy at the gym, um, our manager of the gym, he was like 40. He had a heart attack. Oh my and God. Yeah. I was like, what? Wow. He had a heart attack. And I was just sort of shocked. I was like, well, he seems like he's super healthy. What's going on? And I guess he just was holding on to stress. So he sort of changed his life and, yeah. you know, took some, in other words, we don't want to wait till something really awful happens to have to find gratitude for all the things that we did have, like mm-hmm. appreciate what you've got while you've got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what my mom always says. She's like, you just, you know, you're complaining about this and that and you just don't know how good you have it. And then in 20 years, you're going to look back and you know, mom's always right. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so gratitude is the attitude. That's what I tell my son every day. I'm like, gratitude is your attitude. He doesn't understand me yet, but I'm right. just going to keep putting it into his brain. Yeah. He'll get it. He'll get it. Yeah. He's from a, place he's a of very gratitude. lucky young man. <laughs> oh, you're kind. You're so kind. He doesn't probably buy that, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, where can people find you online? So I am positive energy yoga. I do that with my cheerleading arms. Um, it's the name says it all. And you can go to my website. I teach a couple classes. Uh, well, everything's Zoom these days, right? So I teach two Zoom classes a week. I teach a lot of company classes, which is how I met you through the company class on Zoom. And then I do, uh, I've been doing a ton of like yoga at your desks. So companies will hire me just for 30 minutes of see how I'm sitting in a chair right now that, you know, like how to stretch when you're sitting there. Cause everybody's sitting for, I think yeah. more than usual. So yeah. just stretching your hips and like things you can do just sitting at your desk. So that's been wow. super popular. Um, and then 
you know, just to move your body. So I always say that yoga is a combination of like WD-40, right? To oil up your joints <laughs> right, and right. drain out, like, clean, like keeping everything clean on the inside, right? So yeah. WD-40 means drain out, shout out. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that everybody should be doing yoga. Like this is the deal that I, if you're I not agree. doing it, you're going to end up doing it one way or another. It's called physical therapy, my friends. Unfortunately. That's right. <laughs> You're, you're all going to be doing yoga. Okay. Yoga. Okay, yoga. You're, you're coming my way. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you're all going to be doing it. Trust me. Um, so yeah, I'm online at positiveenergyyoga.com. I've got a YouTube channel, Livia Well. It's an older one, but it has a lot of great flows. And then I do sell my recorded classes. Uh, they come with all the stand up humor um, that is, you know, not worth a dime, but the, the stand yeah. It, so if you're into like a lighthearted practice, I, you, I never teach the same class twice. I mix it up. It's got everything that you, you know, hip openers, twists, um, the strength. I do a lot of ab work. I'm sort of obsessed with working abs. Mm. Core strength is really important to me. So yeah. Anyway, I, I, I offer it all. I teach women's self-defense classes too, still um, big believer in empowering my young girls out there and boys too. So you're here. Yeah, That's, no, yeah. The, yeah. The, the world needs more people like you in it, Olivia. Thank you so much. You're this, so awesome. Thanks for having awesome. me. Thank you. Thank you. No, this, is, this has been awesome. I, I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for taking time, uh, you know, with me and, and uh, away from your family just, you know, for, for about an hour here. Um, it was my uh, pleasure. My pleasure. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>